school live a little higher dot com. We continue learning the book of Rabbi Moshe Cordovero de Ramak, which is called Tomer de Mura under the palm tree. And we are learning today attribute number three, which says he removes inquiry. So it says this is a great attribute of Hashem where he forgives, forgives us not by an intermediary, but he himself cleanses us from whatever bubbles we have made in life. And what does forgiveness entail? Hashem cleanses the sinner from his sins. Uh, as it is written in, in, in um, as it is written, Hashem shall wash the filth of the daughters of Zion, and I shall sprinkle on you pure waters from Yeshayahu and Yehezkel. And this is the attribute of he removes inquity, like he removes injustice. Hashem sends cleansing waters to go and wash away the sin, and he forgives completely. He's not like us that we keep that uh, resentment when people do things to us and we still, it's hard to forget and far, hard to forgive a person even if we talk to them again, but there's always this, uh, this feeling of, I, be, I have to be careful with this person. Uh, Hashem, on the other hand, never feels this way. He cleanses completely, he forgives completely. So man must do exactly the same. He should not say, why should I fix what is someone else's fault or damage? Do not say that, for when a person sins, Hashem himself does not rule. Not through an intermediary fixes his crookedness and washes the filth of his sin. And with this in mind, a person should be ashamed to sin, again, since the king himself is the one that cleans him. So I think about this attribute and I'm thinking about a person in a hospital bed where he can't move and he needs the help of a nurse to do everything he needs to do, you know, his needs. And the shame that a person feels when someone else is cleaning him and taking care of him in, in, in very intimate ways, I imagine that this is what we should feel when we do things that are wrong, that we should feel like, oh, how, how, how shameful of me uh, to put Hashem to clean, to clean up my filth. So it says that, um, that when a person suffers damage, whose results still continue to disturb him, it would be fair for the offender who caused the damage to repay it himself. So in our fair world of fairness, where we everything has to be fair, yes, if someone does a damage to you, you're expecting them to pay it or to take care of it. But many times a person does a damage, it can be a psychological damage, it can be a physical damage, it can be something that you own that he damaged. And nevertheless, we expect people to, to, to clean it for us. And here we see with this attribute that Hashem is not expecting us to clean it. He cleans it for us. So sometimes an offender negligently and shamelessly damages an outstanding and pious person, knowing that the victim will repair the damage himself, even though it is beneath his dignity to do so. And so if the injured party then shows his moral fiber and repairs the damage with his own hands and not through any intermediary, he rises to a very high a moral level, like his level is beyond a uh, high. He awakens Hashem's attribute of mercy expressed by he removes inquity, bringing that element of compassion into the world. So as I said in the last two chapters, every time that we connect to one of these attributes of Hashem and we emulate them and we do the same as Hashem would do, then we are bringing this mercy not only into our lives, we awaken this mercy, it, it will flow into your life, but it will also flow into the world. And so we see that this attribute, um, the source of this attribute, says that when people personally repay, repair the damage that others did to them, Hashem repays them in, in kind, and He cleanses by Himself and not through any intermediary the sins of the Jewish people to purify them as it is written. Hashem will wash the filth of the daughters of Sion and rise and rinse the blood of Jerusalem from its mist. And uh, this is from Yeshayahu. And Rabbi Cordovero de Ramak explains in his, in his other book, Or Yakar, the concept of punishment in Torah thought. And we tend to think that Hashem, when he punishes people, 
is like uh, he's getting back to you. Like you did this, so he's getting back to you. And this is not so. Hashem is not going to send you any suffering if it's not for a purpose, if it's for a cleansing purpose. So any suffering that we have to go through in our lives really is an opportunity for us to correct our ways and to clean anything that we have damaged in our, in our lives. Through this suffering, Hashem puts us in situations where we're, we're put to the test and this is our situations in which we can really rectify any wrongdoing that we have done in this world and Hashem cleanses it for us like if we never did it. So, so we learned in the last uh, uh, class that every time that we do an Avera, every time that we do a wrongdoing, uh, Hashem, we, we ourselves create this destructive angel. When he's the one that puts us in these situations. Why? Because Hashem is waiting for us to clean our ways, for us to be able to repent and do teshuva and clean and clean our slate. And so the Rambam um, uh, lists four stages of teshuva, all of which are within our hands. One is to recognize that we did something wrong. This is the number one step. You have to recognize that you did something wrong. The second step is to regret it, to feel bad, ashamed of what you did. And then is to resolve to never do it again and then to not do it ever again, to turn around and never do it again. And all these are worthy and good, but none of them have the power to annul the destructive angel created through the sin. Only Hashem can do that. So once a person does sincere teshuvah and he repairs his, uh, any bubu he did, then Hashem cleanses the soul of the sinner from the stains left by the sin. So Hashem is the one that washes you and cleans you and puts you in the dry cleaner and, and, and he cleanses you. He himself cleans, cleanses you and he um, purifies you from any wrongdoing that you have done in this world. So there's a story in the Gemara, it's a famous story of Elasa ben Dordaya. And this Elasa ben Dordaya, he was a very pious man. He was one of the very big Sadiq. But it happened to be that he went the wrong way. He went off the derrick. He fell, let's say it. And uh, he followed his passions. And, uh, and he, he forgot about the Torah. He started only living a life of pleasure, of physical pleasure. And one day, he had this urge to do Teshuvah, to return, to be able to go back to his essence. And we see in this uh, Gemara that, the, that this, uh, this Elasa ben Dordaya, he went uh, out and he went to the valley and he called up to the hills and the mountains that surrounded him. And he started to cry and he says, hills and mountains, pray for me, please pray for me. And rather than beseech for him, the, the hills and the mountains said, we are not going to pray for you. That you have to do for yourself. We only pray for ourselves. And then he looked up to the heaven and he cried to the heaven, mercy on my behalf, please, please. He called and the, rather than beseech mercy for you, we will beseech mercy for ourselves as it is written. And the heavens will dissipate like smoke and the earth will be worn out like a garment, they answered. And then he went to the sun and the moon and he started also beseeching them and praying that they should uh, absolve him from anything, any embarrassment that he created. And the same, the, the moon and the, and the sun said the same to him, like, we cannot do it for you. You have to do it for yourself. And then he went to the stars and the constellations and so on and so on. And then, and then suddenly he came up and says, it all depends on me. The only one that can clean my mess is me. Nobody can cl clean up my mess but me. And so it says that he, uh, he, he went into a fetal position. He started to cry and he started to do in Teshuvah and beseeching Hashem that he should forgive him. And in that moment, a voice came from, uh, from heaven. He passed away and a voice came from heaven and said, Rabbi Elasa ben Dordaya is invited to the life in the world to come. And from this we learn that one minute of teshuva in this world is worth more than all the years in the world to come. So we see the importance of really acknowledging the things that we do to really look at ourselves and say, okay, I'm not going in the right way. This is not a good uh, 
character trait I have. I don't like the way I treat people. I don't like the way I talk about people. I don't like the way I deal in my business. I don't like the way I scream at my children. And in this way, when you really recognize, then that's half the cure is with you because then you can start healing and you can start doing the things that you're meant to, to do to be able to clean up your mess. So, but at the end of the day, once you do that, Hashem cleanses every stain that you have created. So I wish you a blessed week. May the mercy of, of God enter your heart. And in that way, this will be a world where there's no, no pain, no wars, no hatred. And this is, um, we should all work on it because it's not a job that's done by one person. It's done uh, by all of us. So remember, live a little higher. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.